and found of treading lightly. Um, and I just want to start tonight's meeting with an acknowledgement of country. And I'd like to welcome everybody uh, firstly, but before I begin, respectfully acknowledge the country on which we are on today um, for us here at Treading Lightly, and I'm in our Treading Lightly hub today. Um, we meet on UN country, being the country of the Doga language group, and we honour the rivers, the mountains, and the boundaries of these lands that we meet on. Um, we acknowledge and respect the people, the culture, the land that still carries the dreaming of this country, and we acknowledge all the deep values of the land that have been managed for tens of thousands of years by our Indigenous people. So it was with, it's with that in mind that I give reverence and respect to some of the best recyclers um, and waste warriors in the whole um, time of history being our Indigenous people. They're very resourceful and don't like waste at all and very um, good at that. So hopefully we can learn something from them too along the way um, as we travel along our recycling path. So I'm going to hand over to you, Miffy, our host extraordinaire, and you can introduce everyone and get us rolling. Awesome. Thank you, Moni, um, and welcome, everybody. Uh, November 8th to 14th is National Recycling Week, so we thought we'd get in early and start this conversation now. Um, I know that I've got loads of questions about this topic, so we're really hoping to answer some of these questions for you tonight as well. We can't cover everything. So we'll focus basically on generating less waste. Uh, we're going to talk about recycling labels. We're going to talk about the yellow bin and red cycle. Uh, we're not going to have time to go into detail around organic waste, but we do hope to run some face-to-face -face workshops in our Treading Lightly Hub in the future on that topic. And we're not going to talk lots about textiles, although I'm excited to hear um, a little update from Fiona a little bit later on that topic as well. So tonight we're mostly going to try to stick to the key common yellow bin questions. And thank you guys for sending through all your questions because we got some great ones when you registered and we'll try to cover all of them. We are using the Zoom technology tonight. Um, we'd love you to keep your cameras on if you feel comfortable. We'll also be using polls and just letting you know we are recording this session. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge that lots of you guys are probably quite expert on this topic, more so than me probably. So if you can contribute anything in this session, um, or if you have any questions that we haven't got to, please, um, hopefully you all know where the chat bar is, please type them in the chat and we'll really do our best to cover that through the evening. Um, I mentioned that we got some great questions, so I'm going to throw them through the, throughout the evening, the ones that you wrote down when you registered. But if I haven't got to that by the end, please, you know, put that in the chat or come off mute and just ask your question at the end. Um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our wonderful panel. I'm very excited that tonight we've got with us uh, Fiona Schurz, who's the Resource Recovery Projects Coordinator at Shoalhaven City Council. She's based in Nowra. And that's a huge thank you, Fiona, for joining us tonight. Give us a wave. Dean can pin you. We've also got a uh, local Milton man, Wombat Price, former star of the Block TV show oh. and self-proclaimed <laughs> Binfluencer. Thanks for joining us, Wombat. No worries. I'm uh, also excited to say we've got Louise Cannon with us tonight. She has 18 years experience working in the waste industry. She currently works for MRA Consulting as a waste and recycling consultant. But most importantly, Louise is our um, secretary extraordinaire for Treading Lightly. So thanks for helping out tonight, Lou. And, you know, we've got Moni, who not only is the president and founder of Treading Lightly, but she's also the program manager and ambassador for Take Three. So an expert on all things marine waste. Gosh, I need to breathe. And I am Miffy, if you didn't know me, I'm the vice president of Treading Lightly. And we've got on this side of me on screen, Dean Howcroft, uh, our tech legend being our wingman. Huh, so thank you. Thank you for joining us and thank you, amazing panel. So before we get into the nitty gritty of waste, we wanted to acknowledge all the R's that come before recycling, like refusing, reducing, reusing and repurposing because they're the really important ones. So I'm gonna to go to each of our panelists now and I'm gonna ask you guys 
what is your top tip for generating less waste at home? I'm going to go to you, Fiona, first. Okay, well, all of those R's are important. And my top tip is obviously you avoid, avoid waste where you can. And for that, I have a little kit that I take with me. It's a drink, reusable drink bottle, coffee cup, and some cutlery in a straw that's just folded up and sits in the bottom of my handbag. So easy, easy as. They're the easy things to do. Don't make life hard for yourself. Yeah, great okay. tips. Easier for women because we carry our handbags. I've got, yes, I've got that stuff. These are in my car as well. I have several of them. So, yeah. Yep. Great tip. What about you, Lou? What's your top tip for reducing waste at home? I guess so if you have had to have bought um, something in a Ziploc bag, for example, some frozen strawberries or bananas from Woolies as we as we do love to put them in our smoothies, etc., then don't throw it away once you've once you've used it. Definitely I've got a pile of them saved and they come in real um, really really handy. You can wash them out really easy. Um, and if you've got a, a banana that's going a bit too far over and you don't want to eat it, just chop it up whack it in the bag that's already there might say bananas or strawberries but either way you'll work it out <laughs> put it back yeah. in the freezer yep never buy ziploc bags again love it lou um i've got plenty of them saved too does um you guys are there any great tips that you want to share put pop them in the chat now and we'll share them with the whole group later we'll go to one back now what's your top tip for reducing waste at home it's just as simple as buy less you know we buy so much well, stuff that we don't need. I nearly swore then. <laughs> um, and yeah, and be hard on yourself, I reckon. I say to people yeah. like, you know, someone that doesn't get bring their coffee cup, if I turned up without my coffee cup, wouldn't buy one, okay? Teach yourself a lesson. You <laughs> won't do it again. <laughs> no, I think that's true. What about you, Moni? Um. I, I think in the last um, conversation series we had, I said, don't have kids, could apply here. But actually, I don't think so, because kids actually are really, really good at teaching adults how to reduce less waste, um, reduce their waste and, you know, um, recycle and all of those things. But actually, um, all jokes aside, I think it's being mindful and conscious of the things that we consume and what the end life of of literally everything we use is from our clothing to, you know, um, when we grab our cup of coffee, what's going to happen with that cup after we've drunk our coffee. So it really is just thinking, like switching the brain on and thinking as we, um, you know, use things, what's going to happen to this after I'm done with it. That's awesome. I, I'm still trying to digest whether I, that one time about a month ago and I forgot my key cup, I didn't teach myself a lesson. Ah. I just got the takeaway cup, but it's a good point. Any other great tips coming through the chat, Dean? You're on mute. Okay, um, Anne Marie, uh, buy second hand whenever you can. Elizabeth yep. Smith, love a good bento lunchbox. Yes. <laughs> uh, takeaway containers, the deli. Um, Amanda Finley, my kids are the best. And they're all coming in, recyclers. Yeah. And before you buy anything else, ask yourself, do you need Please. all great, great tips? Um, but say we do have to purchase some things, obviously. Let's talk about recycling. Now, Louise, recycling labels can be pretty confusing. Can you please give us a quick rundown about what all the triangles mean or do we even need to worry about the triangles? Great question, Missy. Um, at the Thank moment, you. the triangles are, are on their way out of Australia. Um, we have a new system called the Australasian Recycling Label, and but it's in a transition phase and it's actually up to the individual companies who make the products to decide if they're going to use this new label, but they are getting on board more and more um, every day, the, the company, the different companies. So you will start seeing different um, little recycling labels on your on your packets that you buy and you want to do the right thing with. Um, there's a really cool little... Uh, video on the recyclingnearyou.com.au website uh, which is basically promoting this new recycling label and Miffy I think it'd be great if you could play that now. On to it.
The Australasian Recycling Label is an on-pack labelling system that takes the confusion out of recycling for consumers. There are three types of labels. The first is a coloured recycling symbol, which means the packaging can go in the recycling bin. Secondly, the clear symbol, which means an item can be recycled as long as you follow the extra instructions under the symbol. And finally, the bin symbol, which means the item can't be recycled and will have to go in the rubbish. The Australasian Recycling Label will give you the confidence to start recycling right. Because when we dispose of waste correctly, we keep contaminants out of the recycling bin and make sure we don't lose valuable materials to landfill. And when we get recycling right, we make new products from recycled materials that are better for the environment. Check the label today to see which parts belong in recycling, the rubbish, or can be returned to store. It's the right label for the right bin. Excellent. It's the right label for the right bin. Oh. Excellent. Thanks, thanks, Miff. Um, yeah, so that was, it's just a really um, easy way to explain what the label is. So I thought I'd show you that rather than trying to explain it myself. Um, as I said, we are in a transition period and there's also to just to flag that it's not perfect. Um, the they've had to set this up as you can imagine um, based off so many different products and also on the backdrop that every single council generally has a different um, list or range of materials that they can accept for recycling and that's due to the fact that each material recycling facility that the yellow bin gets sent to has different technology um, inside, inside it basically to be able to separate out those different materials so it's that's that's why um, this, you know, you, you may come across that it's not exactly right for the Shoalhaven. So this is a great start of a 10 to make really simplifies it down what we need to do with what. But what I would highly recommend you go to is the Shoalhaven City Council website. Um, they've got an awesome guide there. I think it's like six or seven page guide to recycling what can go in your yellow top recycling bin. Um, and it's really clearly laid out uh, what, what can go in there. And there's also a great resource also on the website where you can basically pick any material type uh, of what you might need to throw away and it tells you what your options are in the Shoalhaven. So we they actually have done a great job. I don't, I don't work for council, but <laughs> um, they've done a great job of making it simple, I think, uh, for, for the options that we have down here in the Shoalhaven. Uh, honestly, we have the best council. I, I'm it's amazing. And we're going to send you all those links as follow up. Um, but Fiona, I, I just want to know when I send my little yellow bin off to count to the, to the recycling center in Nara, what exactly happens to it when it gets there? I stay up at night, I, I lose sleep. What if I put one wrong, wrong thing in the yellow bin? Is the whole bin gone to landfill? Tell us. Okay. So no, please don't lose any more sleep about this Miffy. If you put one wrong thing in there, it's fine. It won't spoil the load um, because that's where the sorting facility comes in. So we don't want too much of the wrong thing in, though. So it would be really nice to be running at a, a very low sort of percentage of what we call contamination, which is the wrong thing. Um, so what happens is the stuff goes in the truck, the truck goes back, it actually goes back to our West Nara facility and gets taken, actually put into another truck and taken to a sorting facility where it goes through a series of machines and magnets and, um, and also hand sorting. And all the products are separated into their the different product types. Now, what you might have heard, which is true, if they have a load of glass on a truck, so all the glass that's come from, you know, all your glass drinking bottles and things, if they have, I think it's a hundred, hundred couple of hundred grams of a ceramic in there, that can spoil the load. So it's, the, it's where we sort that is really, really important. And the more of the wrong thing that the community puts in, the harder it is to get that sorting right. So, yeah, does that answer your question? But it does not go to landfill. 
I've got a little bit to add to that, okay? Now, you're worried about your bin, okay? You need to worry about your whole street because you think about they all go in the truck together. So it's your oh, job, yeah. Mick, get the whole street together. It's a street party and yep. hold a recycling talk. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Are any of my neighbours on here tonight? I'm not sure. You get into them. <laughs> um, we had a question in the registration from Andrew Fitzsimons. I don't know if he's on here. Can school groups visit the facility? I know, let's like pre-COVID, Fiona. Yes, and post-COVID. So we love taking school groups um, because I know, I always say this, school groups, when they find out that their excursion today is going to the tip, um, they think they've drawn the short straw. Oh, oh, miss, I don't feel well, you know, I've got to go home. But once we've shown them what we do and how professional and how technical it is, they're really surprised and pleased. So, yes, absolutely love community groups to come and also schools post-COVID. So we're looking at reinvigorating that early next year. That's so, that's really exciting because I've never done the tour and I'm really keen to do it. So that would be great. You'll be first on the bus. <laughs> no, me and my school. Um, uh, Dean, before we move on, just wanted to get a feel for how confident everyone is on the line with uh, recycling. We're gonna, you're going to see a quick poll now. So just fill this in for us. Um, do you call yourself a waste warrior? You're not very confident at all. Um, you sort of know what you're doing. And I think you're going to have to read them out to me, Dean, because I'm not seeing them. All right. Um, so we got 58% saying, I think I'm doing okay. And 42%, I'm a waste warrior. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. We've got some pretty good odds there. I'm happy with that. So as I said, if you've got anything to share, put it in the chat and share it with us. Um, each recycling centre has, Lou said this, each recycling centre has different capacities and requirements and it can be really confusing, especially coupled with the, some of the inconsistencies that we see on the recycling label. Um, tonight we've got these specialists here from NARA. I saw Amanda Finlay on the line as well. Um, I'm going to go to you first, Fiona. What's the most common mistake or misconception people have with yellow bin in our area? Well, I think... There's so many. Pick one. Um, what's the most common? Well, putting probably putting soft plastic in the recycling bin, the yellow bin, because it's it's very public now. A lot the community is very educated. Oh yes, we can we can recycle soft plastics now. So they just automatically associate the recycling with the yellow bin, and the soft plastics really interferes with the machinery and can create a lot of problems so that's probably a common misconception yeah okay and we're going to talk a bit about recycling and soft plastics in a bit but that's interesting that that is the worst culprit hey wow and what that and green waste but let's not talk about green waste today <laughs> right um wombat what did you bring along to show us I'm surrounded by um, my recycling. <laughs> I guess I want to talk about this little fella here because I was asked this question. Um, lids are a bit of a problem. We want to remove them. Okay. The pump pack, you know, this thing here has one, two, three, four different kinds of plastic in it. So it can't be separated. So remove your lids. They go in the red bin. Single use container goes in the yellow bin. Wombat, mm -hmm. that single-use container is black. Is that yeah. an issue? Nope. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about my sushi tray? What numbers it got on it? Is is there a color issue, Fiona Wombat, with our machines? So they pick up black. It's got a um. I can't read that. Sorry to ask you a hard question straight up. Number six. No. no. Well, one, check for Louise's ARL, those labels. But two, uh, plastic trays are fine. A six, that's a polystyrene, a type of polystyrene. 
um, but not, oh, I shouldn't have said that. It's, it's not an expanded polystyrene. So any sort of a foam, you might know polystyrene is foam. Yeah. No, definitely not in the yellow bin. But when it comes as a hard plastic, which means it's not extruded, yep, that's fine. That can go in the recycling bin. So, so I've read in other council areas that they the color they don't pick up the black color. So that's why black hard plastics can't go in. But ours can. Sometimes, yeah, the lasers they have different optics, and that might be the the case for other councils. But for us, until we're advised by the recycling companies that they can't accept it, then we take it. See, that's right. So different in every different council. That's mm. so good to know. Um, that's why we have the yellow bin recycling guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because um, it's specific for our council. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's amazing. And it's such a good guide. We'll send it out to everybody afterwards. Um, what about, so we talked about lids. What about you talked about lids? Yep. What about the, the milk bottles? Are we supposed to, um, can we put the lid back on the milk bottle? No. So that, that lid can, has to go into the landfill bin because it's too small to go through the recycling system. Or you, can I jump in? Can, always. <laughs> or you can squish it and put the lid back on. So it stays the lid, the lid can go with the bottle, but if it's separated, the lid will fall through the machinery and go to landfill, as Wombat said. So, okay. you really, so you really need to squish all the air out of it because you think of a, a recycling truck actually compacts everything. So if you're just putting the lid back on and throwing it in, the truck's going to blow the lid off. Yeah, whether you put them in yeah. separate or you put them together. So you're really going to have to squash that thing tight, put the lid back on. Okay, that's a really good thing to know. Um, what, about the, what about all my beer bottles lids? Can I, can I put them in a tin can? Squash the tin can. Is that okay? Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> You've got quite a few there, Miffy. Yeah. <laughs> that, they're, um, they're, oh, it's not my husband. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's online. Well, there is a difference, though, if it's an aluminium can or a steel. That, that, that is actually um, a steel can and they're steel lids. But if you have an aluminium lid on a bottle or something, then if you just pop the little plastic thing out from inside, you can squish that up with your aluminium foil and recycle yes. that. I have way more wine bottle aluminium lids. I just didn't bring them to my office today. <laughs> That's why I'm such an expert at that. <laughs> so somebody on the line asked, uh, somebody in the registration asked, what do we do with small bits of um, aluminium? Do you want to keep going there, Moni? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought I could sneak in a sip of tea, sorry. Um, yeah, so the question again was the small bits of aluminium. Yep. Yeah. So it's just a matter of you can recycle aluminium and aluminium is one of the um, easiest things to recycle. I think the last I read, like within 30 days, you can have like an aluminium can, not that this is, but um, it can be recycled and be a new aluminium can within 30 days. So. And it's really easy to recycle. So to recycle aluminium from tin, like from aluminium foil to the bottle lids we were talking about, to the little lids that you rip off the, the yogurt, yeah. Um, Easter egg wrappers, chocolate wrappers, things like that. Just try to save them all till you can wrap them up in a bigger piece of foil till it's the size of at least a tennis ball and then just throw it in your yellow bin. And you know it's yeah. going to be recycled. Lou's collecting her chocolate. I'm collecting my yogurt and my wine bottle lids. I'm going to squash them all into a nice big size like Wombat's demonstrating there. Boom. Hope that answered that question about aluminium. Yeah. Um, okay. What about, um, so we had a question about Tetra Packs. Um, this is a twofold question. Do Tetra Packs, oh, there's many questions this. Do Tetra Packs go in the yellow bin? Do we need to ply the plastic lid off? And how well do we need to wash out all sorts of things before we chuck them in. Who wants to answer that one? It's a wombat. He's already told me the answer. <laughs> okay, so Tetra Packs can be recycled in our yellow curbside bin. Um, I remove the little plastic lids. They annoy me. Um, and they just go into the red bin. 
to go to landfill. So if you could probably buy one that doesn't have that little lid on it, then you're winning already. But at the moment we do recycle them. So let's keep doing it. Um, to wash them out, you just want to use your dirty dish water is the best way. You don't want to waste a whole bunch of water. Otherwise we're kind of creating another problem. So a bit of dirty dish water, a bit of a rinse out. And like I said, you don't need to flatten them, but because um, the truck will do it anyway. But if you want to flatten them, then sure, go ahead. Okay, that sounds fair. Um, all right, on to paper. Question from D, and also my mum. Paper recycling size limits. Um, are there, is there anything too small to recycle? Yeah, and also um, too glossy. What's too glossy? And like mum was asking about like business cards, like is that too small? Do you want me to go again? <laughs> or you want to give it to Fiona? You, too you, you can go. Okay. So um, it needs to be the size of an envelope or bigger. Okay. Anything small than that. So receipts and things like that are too small. So they get lost in the whole system. So anything oh. as big as an envelope or bigger. Um, gloss is not a problem. So you can recycle any of the junk mail and things like that. I think it is that really high gloss business card is the only one that they have trouble with. Not Fiona, if I got that correct. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, the small stuff just falls through. Yeah. Really. So, I didn't know that. Um, so would I be then therefore keeping an old envelope and just chucking all those little scraps into the envelope like I'm collecting my aluminium? You could, but the truck's going to squish things up anyway. So, but yeah, I mean, you could, it, it doesn't hurt to try. It doesn't hurt to try. But one thing just about squashing the bottles, uh, the more you squash stuff into your bin, the more room you have. Because we only have one, one collection a fortnight and a lot of people have so much packaging, It's because it essentially is packaging, that it gets lost because then it gets put into the red bin. So if you think a little bit about how you can squash stuff into your yellow bin you're getting more recycling value yeah totally um amanda's made a good point in the chat um she likes learning new stuff but now she's going to put her little small bits of paper into the compost which i should be doing too um, yes oh forget about. about compost yes i know yeah. oh my goodness. it's also a bit another big one that i found out was um shredded paper definitely obviously cannot go in the yellow bin so shredded paper compost worm garden yes Put your shredded yep. paper in your chook in your chook layer box. We'll be chook. <laughs> Hopefully that answers Lorna's question. I'm trying to read the chat and listen, <laughs> but that's the answer on shredded paper. Um, no receipts though. Um, they're toxic. Is that correct? Those. But they're just too small. Okay. Receipts are too small. So, um, yeah, it's you've got to think if you're thinking about the technology at the other end sorting little bits of paper are going to float off and not get yeah. captured. It's funny because I thought about that with the little plastic bits and the little metal bits, but I just didn't consider that with the paper. Um, right. <laughs> we're all learning. Wombat, um, I learned from you the other day. What, what do we do with our lids on our glass jars? Did you bring that? Glass jars, we, we take them off. Okay, so the, the metal lid on a glass jar, not a plastic one, plastic one's no good, but a metal lid on a glass jar must be removed because as Fiona said earlier, in the recycling facility, there's magnets and they pick up the metal. So if you leave your lid on, it'll pick up the glass jar and end up in the metal pile. Not so good. So it all seems so obvious now, <laughs> but you know, earlier. Um, talk to me about uh, glass. Is all glass recyclable? No. So... Um, the glass that we're looking for in the recycling system or in the recycle bin is just pretty much is glass containers. So something like a jar or a bottle, something that you'd buy from the supermarket. Um, glass, if you break a glass or, or crockery, as we talked about before, that's a different kind of glass. That's a hardened glass. And it's the same with mirrors or windows. Okay. Um, they can't go in the recycle bin because it actually messes with the system and ends up putting the wrong types of glass together. So we're just looking for those single, you know, jars, bottles, that kind of thing. Okay, all right. Um, there was another question in the registration. Lou, you had an answer for this one. 
Can you recycle hard plastics like milk crates and storage crates? What would you do with them? Uh, they, I think they've got a much longer life that we need to preserve. And so reuse is definitely the, the way forward for those and taking them to your local um, buyback centre or just dropping them off. Someone will come along and want to use them. So yeah, definitely re try and think of a reuse option. Even just leave them out on your front yard. Someone will come along and pick them up. I love the buyback centre. It's one of our favourite places. Um, Dean, I'm missing all the questions in the chat. Have I missed any more? You're welcome to come off chat, off mute, and ask your question direct. Well, Nikki, can I just jump in? I know Angela Please. and Sandy made a very important point about not putting your receipts in your compost because they are very toxic. I just thought I'd, in case no one had seen that in the chat, just put them in the bin. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we've missed? There's a question um, from Dina about why can't we make producers of the packaging responsible for their end of life? Um, that is something that the governments are working on. Um, it's a slow pro it's a slow progress because they need to be incentivized some way. Um, there are um, for more product stewardship schemes they're called coming on sort of extended project extended producer responsibility schemes coming on for different um, material types, which essentially means that the um, producer is um, in either dictated to by the government because they're going to ban it or they're incentivized in some way to, to ensure that there's a circular um, or a, a take back option, if you like, for that material type. Um, and, you know, if they don't end up doing something about it, then they'll, the government will end up legislating. So they're sort of, they've, there's a list actually of materials that the government are thinking of legislating about. And so basically if industry doesn't get a, get a move on and do something about them, they're going to legislate for it. So yeah, there's a new battery stewardship scheme come, uh, just being launched in January. So watch out for that called B-Cycle. And um I work for a medic big medical company and we make a lot of plastic waste. And I know that we're already looking at this, um, you know, re returning our recy recyclable plastic waste to us, you know, and it's going to be a sales differentiator as well. So mm -hmm. thankfully companies are starting to look at it. Marty's got a question about, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, I was just going to read out that last question. Uh, what about cardboard boxes with sticky tape? Are they recyclable? Tissue boxes, pasta packets with little windows, Little plastic windows. Great what question, Marty. We haven't covered that yet. Tell us, Fiona. Yep, that's all fine. Obviously, if you've got a, a box with masking tape on it, if you can take it off, then it, it just means it's a cleaner product for us to recycle. But uh, envelope, windows with envelopes, all that sort of thing, it's fine. The, the paper cardboard recycling process washes it and takes out all the staples and all the gums, you know, the back of envelopes, the gummy parts and plastics and bits. And they, they, the process removes those things. So don't stress about envelopes and a bit of masking tape. That's fine. So what about our oil on our pizza boxes? Uh, not, not the oil on the pizza box. So that's, that's no good, is it? No, the it, the oil is worse. So they really ask that you don't, yeah. Lots of pizza boxes now, you will notice, have a perforation between the lid and the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Can, it helps rip it. So, But I would put the dirty one with the oil into your compost. Because worms, worms are the waste warriors of the world. Worms are the waste warriors of the world. That's the quote for tonight. I'm loving it. <laughs> that is so good. Um, on the medical waste, we also had a question from somebody uh, about recycling the little plastic caps off her daughter's diabetic needles. Um, I'm assuming they're too small. It, they're too small. Um, and I, I would direct her to the... Council supports a Sharps program with several pharmacies across the Shoalhaven where medically generated Sharps go. So I would recommend that every, everything that is in it, any plastic metal, anything to do with the Sharps, they all just go back to the pharmacy at no charge. So those little things, again, they're just too small for our system, for the uh -huh. yellow bin. Okay. 
Um, any other questions before we move on to one of my favourite topics, which is soft plastic? We can come back anyway. So um, I know our friend Sandy asked a question on when she registered. How do we tell the difference between soft plastics, like between soft plastic and cellophane? And before we go into that detail, I was going to hand over to Moni just to um, tell us a little bit about Red Cycle. And there's a poll on your screen now that will be in a sec. Um, just wanted to gauge the audience. Who's heard of Red Cycle? Who's using Red Cycle already? What do the results look like, Moni? Um, I'll have to wait for Dean to pass them on to me because I can't see them. But <laughs> got seventy percent, sixty-nine percent participating. Come on, guys! <laughs> I've got to make a cup of tea. All right. So, um, not sure what Red Cycle is. It's thirty-seven percent. Um, most of the time, eleven percent. Always fifty-two percent. Well, that's that's super exciting. Like some people are doing it, but some people don't know about it. So what an amazing chance tonight to learn about Red Cycle. Tell us about Red Cycle, Moni. Yay, I'm actually so glad I wasn't going to be preaching to everyone being the converted. Because <laughs> for those that are converted, bear with me. Um, so Red Cycle is a program where we can basically recycle any of those soft plastics like bags. Um, and I'll go through that a little bit more, but that we that Fiona was talking about that sometimes we put into our yellow bin which contaminate our waste um, but still are very valuable um, plastics to be recycled so um, soft plastics I think we're going to pop up a little list of all the different types of soft plastics that can and can't be recycled but basically you save all your soft plastics now here I've got a this is a soft plastic this bag it's had coffee beans in it Again, it's a Ziploc bag. We probably would use this at home for many other different things. But in this case, we've actually used it to actually stuff so many different types of soft plastics into. Um, so uh, all the different soft plastics that we've saved, we've shoved into this bag. And we'll, next time we go shopping at Woolies or Coles, we'll take this bag along with us and we'll chuck it in a bin that they have there and you can, and then, yeah, basically you just throw it in there and then it gets taken away to a company down in Victoria that then recycle it into all sorts of really, really wonderful things. Um, we've even got some of that in our Shoalhaven. So I think we're going to show a picture of some of those shortly. But these are some of the things that you can recycle. So as you can see, um, biscuit packets, bread bags, bubble wrap, um, and, and it gives you instructions. They're no larger than an A3 sheet because it kind of winds around the machine if it's too big. Um, cellophane from flowers, which kind of, that wasn't on there before. So you were talking a little bit um, earlier about how can we tell what's a soft plastic and what isn't. And previously you couldn't put cellophane in there. Um, so you, the difference you could tell with that was if soft plastics are kind of scrunchable and they kind of reform back to their original shape, uh, cellophane you scrunch and they stay nice and tight. So before you couldn't recycle those, but now um, some of those cellophanes you can. So the thing is to get onto this website and we'll share those links and have a good look at it because you'll be really surprised at the things that you can recycle. And we produce so much soft plastics, it's not funny. Um, or we use even when we're really trying not to so um, some things come to you in the mail um, this was a Telstra tea box bag which unfortunately we couldn't avoid um, so we've used it to stuff the soft plastics in to send away check out the um the cling wrap though you can I mean we don't no one needs cling wrap but you can actually red cycle Glad brand Coles brand and Woolworths brand but you can't red cycle any, any other brand? Yeah. So the thing is with cling wrap um, is, and, and any of the soft plastics that may potentially have like a recycle label on, or like a, um, a compostable label on them, because some soft plastics now say they're compostable, they're made of um, vegetable starches and things like that. Any bags that you get, so if you get a bag that's, that, that says it's compostable, you can't put it in soft plastics. So it's, it's kind of a bit difficult because some, if you, unless you have a compost that you can put it into, um, it's actually more of a pain in the butt. 
<laughs> because you can't recycle it. Um, whereas uh, that's why I think some of those other cling wraps have made very specific that you can't put in the red cycle because they actually, they don't, they don't reform into like another type of plastic. They're made of vegetable starch and they kind of, they can't, they can't do anything with them. Um, any other, there was like, I learned lots of, like this, this list changes all the time. Like, yeah, you really have to keep checking. And I, I can see there's a question there from Michelle Barker. I think it might have been. It's disappeared off my screen. But it says biodegradable plastic. No, you cannot put it in the soft plastics. So sometimes we think we're doing the right thing with all these biodegradable products. Um, but they're actually not. They're just biodegradable, which means they don't really disappear. They're still there. They just break up into tiny, tiny little pieces. And... Um, they're not, they're kind of a little bit of greenwashing to some extent. And the reason I asked the question about the black sushi tray before is because I saw on this one, um, Red Cycle won't take black plastic bags. And I think that's that's the optics on their machines as well. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I actually didn't even know that, to be honest. So that's why it's really important to keep checking this. And we do we do, do that often we kind of jump on and... Um, yeah, just check that every now and then um, just to see because things change. Like the little squishy yogurt tubs, which I must say I don't like particularly myself. I've been doing education in preschools and there's so many of them. Like I did a week where the, one of the preschools saved all their, their lunchbox waste and the huge amount of lunchbox waste was those little yogurt squishies. Um, and... Uh, you you, ha you, you, um, you couldn't recycle those before. Well, now you can put them in your soft plastics. You don't even have to wash them out. Just pop the lid back on, pop them in your soft plastics. So that's changed, which is really good because there's been so many of them being used, which I would, ha I would actually love to see not on the shelves, to be honest. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know about Red Cycle, in our town, we've got, you can take all your soft plastics to Coles and Woolies that's that's our two options and the bins look like this you'll find them pretty easily at the front of the store yeah any um so question in the chat so soft plastics don't need to be totally cleaned of food waste um please make sure your plastic is dry and as empty as possible yeah it doesn't matter if there's a few crumbs in there that's fine you know um but the most important thing is that they're not wet because um you know the uh, they create mould and that becomes a problem in the recycling system. So definitely if you need to wash something out, my poor windowsill at my kitchen has always got bags stuck to it because they're drying out. <laughs> um, yeah. Not I use them, reuse, I do that to reuse them mostly. But yeah, if I have to put something in red cycle and wash it out, that's what happens with it. And then once it's dry, I just put it in the red cycle. What about Fiona? Do you want to add anything about red cycling? Or should we talk a bit about replast? Oh, I think Moni covered Red Cycle fairly well. So that's what you've got up on screen is the Red Cycle website. And it's very, very user friendly. So I just recommend people do go and have a look at it. Um, uh, Wombat, you might want to talk about replays, do you? Oh, you mean the kind of thing that comes out of Red Cycle, where it actually, what it turns into? Ooh, for for yeah. example, on your spot, oh, I was just about to show you that. Oh, no, you can pop that up. That's exactly what it turns into. Park benches. Um, they use it a lot in national parks for some of the walkways, things like that. So that's what our soft plastic ends up becoming. So this is going to be placed at Ulladulla Public School very soon because we've just bought awesome. one of them. And obviously without the demand for, you know, end products, they're not going to have the capacity to process all that disgusting soft plastic. So Yeah, I mean, I think... There's, there's probably more than enough to make enough stuff. We want to reduce, you know, as much as we can or refuse. But yeah, this is this is where. It, but I, I was very surprised that uh, people listening at home um, that some people don't know about Red Cycle. I figured everyone knew about it, but it just goes to show that I think that the supermarkets need to make those bins a little bit bigger so we can all see them. <laughs> Yeah, totally. These are some more replast products that have been used down at Bermagui, I think. Yeah, so this is the sea pool at Bermagui. This is that they've um, it's really good good example of what um, you know the product comes back looking like. 
And even, you know, it, like you said, if you're going to national parks, you might often see bollards and things like that made of, of these, of the um, red cycle plastic, which all get sent to replas. Um, and, I, you know, Fiona knows I've been hassling her for many years about making sure we get council to use more of these products. Um, and not that it's her responsibility, but yeah, I'd, I'd really love to see our council, you know, have more of these products on our in our community, so people can see this circular kind of uh, uh, recycling that um, we do. Yeah. Like Bombat said, it's, it's ideally we don't want to have the waste, but I know for some people, you know, there's some instances where it's difficult, and there's always going to be some. So at least let's bring it back to our community in a in a beautiful way. So, Moni, um, you said the children of the future, but my husband's just posted that only one of the students at Ulladulla High in his class do know about Red Cycle and do it. It's really interesting, hey? Mm. Maybe we need to get up there with a bit of education to the high school. Oh, definitely. And we've been doing that for a lot of, a lot of years. Um, we've, we've just have, we've, um, COVID's kind of prevented us from doing a bit of that education. But I tell you what, there's a whole generation of pre primary school kids coming through that are so all over it. I can yeah. guarantee you of that. Yeah. Preschoolers. One of the preschools in Ulladulla just built a massive big whale out of soft plastics. So, yeah, it was really cool. And they know all about it. So Awesome. All right, we better move on. Um, Fiona, I've read that the Shoalhaven's running out of landfill space. And within 10 years, our West Nara landfill facility will reach capacity. So I just wanted to take everybody back to the start of tonight's session and remind everyone that we really need to be actively generating less waste. So start refusing to start with. Um, but Fiona, I did hear that there's some exciting news around the corner. Um, can you tell us more about the new bioelectra bio facility that is going to be built in Nara, please? Okay, so yes, that's true. We are running out of landfill space and we have elected, or council has elected to go with some Polish technology, hence the name of the company, company Bioelectra. So we're a first in Australia. And I think our council should be congratulated for actually being innovative and um, actually wanting to take a go forward and not do what everyone else is doing, actually look beyond, you know, beyond whatever, what the EPA says we should do. And so the new technology is, will process the red bin. So everything that you put in your red landfill bin will actually be processed. And we're looking to 80 to 90% of that red bin being able to go on to be reused into something. So the processing the red bin itself is not new technology, but the technology we are using uh, from Poland, which is all about sterilization. And that sterilization is the difference. It dries it out, dries the waste, and it reduces the smell by being dry. And then once the, that's the first thing that happens to the waste, it gets shredded and, and um, goes through these autoclave, autoclave systems. And then it gets treated almost like the way the recycling is sorted. So recycle, any lost recycling, which I spoke about earlier, that ends up in the red bin, that will be captured. And the organic fraction that is in the bin that will be captured and that becomes a biomass, which will be a feedstock for concrete products. Uh, and anything else that's in the bin, even, even the yucky stuff like nappies and, you know, that, that the company will have a market for all of those products. So, and that was conditional that they, it's on the company to find the markets for the products. And they've done that and we're moving forward with that technology. The system won't be, I think they're starting, they're wanting to start to actually turn the first sod. I don't think they are able to actually. Amanda might be able to. She, she um, just had to drop off. Oh, okay. Well, because it's council elections sort of in December and so there's a period where things can't happen. So it possibly is in early in the new year where that will the construction will commence and it will be 
placed at the West Nara site or adjacent to the West Nara facility. And I think it's really exciting. I really think that the technology has come so far in such short periods of time that, that we can process and get quality product out of our garbage bins. I think that's that's I think that's something that we should be congratulated for. Uh, the, 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 the processing of the red bin that's been done in the past hasn't had all this autoclave technology applied to it. And the, the end product that they've been getting is not good quality. It's the, you know, the organic fraction is not something that you can put on a, a agricultural land. So there's just too many plastics and glass fragments within it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's going to give our landfill 50 years plus. It's amazing. So that's no one wants to build another landfill. And while landfill is is low technology and it does have a role to play, we need to embrace the technology that's coming through. Should we play the video? <laughs> yes, yeah, show the video. Play the video. Let's do it. Out of our respect for nature, we, the Bioelectro Group, have created a new way of processing municipal solid waste. By using this innovative system, we can considerably relieve our environment from the need for waste landfilling. This revolutionary method is based on a new, incredibly effective technological process which uses the Autoclave Rotosterile BEG 7000, a machine we designed to treat unsorted municipal waste in the sterilization process. Municipal solid waste collected from private households and transported to our installation is directed to the reception hall, which is the only dirty zone in the whole facility. Then the waste is initially shredded and then loaded into the Autoclave. Under conditions of saturated steam, with the pressure reaching 5 bars and the temperature up to 150 degrees Celsius, the waste is physically and chemically processed. As a result, the biodegradable fraction undergoes physical changes and becomes completely separated from the other elements. The process conditions are automatically adjusted by a control program. After several hours of hermetic processing, the waste is fully sterilized and the final volume of the waste is significantly reduced. For sterilization purposes, we use the steam generated in our own steam units. The process of generating and pressurizing the steam takes place in a completely sealed system, which means that no water is released to the environment. After the autoclaving process, the treated waste is still hotter than the surrounding environment, so it stabilizes naturally, causing sterile water to vaporize from the waste. This phenomenon has no negative impact on the environment, as the waste and the water are already purified. As soon as the sterilization process is completed, the waste is unloaded to the buffer zone. Through a lifting feeder, integrated with a magnetic separator, waste is transported to a set of mechanical pneumatic screens, also equipped with an eddy current separator. At this stage of the recycling process, we isolate any metal elements, ferrous and aluminium. In the next step, we separate the pre-SRF fraction, which is used for alternative fuel production. The most demanding unit in the technological process of separation is the set of optical sorters. The NIR optical sorter, designed to separate plastics from mixed waste, fully isolates the following fractions. Colored and transparent PET, which are plastic bottles and containers. The PP fraction, which is polypropylene, and other plastics, polyethylene and polystyrene. Each of these plastic elements is ideal for further recycling. Simultaneously, glass is separated from the processed waste. It takes the form of clean colored, free of sand, stones, and any other contaminants. By isolating glass of such high quality, we set a worldwide precedent. 
which was only possible in our unique technological arrangement with a laser detection optical sorter. Over 30% of the entire processed waste is a biodegradable fraction, also called biomass. Separation of this fraction is the key element of our technology. Our biomass is sterile and free of contaminants, including glass or plastics. Its high energetic value, low humidity and other physical characteristics make it an ideal alternative fuel for green energy production. For right. I think we're running short of time, but I think that's so, so the idea. Yeah, it's such exciting technology. So to just sum it up, in the near future, we'll keep up our good work at recycling, obviously, and we'll be able to recover and reuse nearly everything from the red bin. That's yes. But please keep using your yellow bin the way we've been talking about. The, the, what happens with the yellow bin will not change. It will still take what it takes and we get that goes through a separate process, a separate recycling mm -hmm. facility to this uh, red bin technology. And we'll keep up our great work at composting, but if a few organic waste bits end up in the red bin, this cool facility is going to turn it all into biomass and reuse it. Yes, and it won't be just a few bits. A lot of people put red <laughs> garden waste in there. So, yeah, I, it's, I just think it's something we should be really looking forward to and we'll be able to show people. Once it's up and running, there's viewing rooms and tours. And so, yes, awesome. we'd love you to all come along. Give us a thumbs up if you're as excited about this as we at Treading Lightly are. So, so exciting. <laughs> um, and so proud of our council. Um, there's lots of things we haven't covered tonight. There's lots of weird waste items out there which we've not discussed. Um, you know, and the answer to lots of these things does lie with TerraCycle, which you can, we'll, we'll send you a link to. But we don't know much about this. But I just wanted to get all your like ideas, you, you legends on the line. Um, what are you doing with some of your weird waste? So get on the chat now. Where do you take things like, this is an easy one, Particularly locally, where do you take batteries? Jump off, jump off mute if you want to shout it out. Aldi. Aldi. Well, there are, yep, Aldi's office works, places like that. And also the depots, all of the recycling and waste depots take batteries at no awesome. charge. Where do you take wetsuits? Anyone? Uh, Rip Curl take wetsuits. Yeah, Rip Curl's taking wetsuits back and recycling them. That's amazing. Where do you take contact lenses, my husband? Optometrist. Yeah, Tony Island Eye Care takes the contact lens cases back. What about bread tags? Sandy? Here. So yeah. we have a little collection thing at the hub <laughs> for the bread tags. Yeah. Uh, ink cartridges. Office National. Along with dead felt tip pens. Yeah. Love it. What about blister packs? <sighs> I've got, I've got it. Yeah. I've got it. So Molly Mook Pharmacies yeah. just ordered their very first TerraCycle pack and they're going to start taking blister packs for us. Right. Which is very cool. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other questions? Light globes can go to the tip, I think. Yeah. All right, we didn't really talk much about uh, textile waste. And in the last two minutes well, slash 30 seconds of this call, Fiona, can you share with us any other exciting initiatives that council's planning? Um, particularly, I know you did mention something around textile waste. Yes, textile waste, we are going to be entering into a 12 month trial from December with a local company who can process excess textile waste. So we'll be placing bins clothing bins at all of the depots. So keep a lookout for those down at Aldala if you're or anywhere in the Shoalhaven at our depots. Another amazing initiative by our council. I sound like I should work for them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's amazing. So it's eight o'clock, just wanted to wrap up. Um, as we said in the beginning, this is just the start of the conversation. We'll send out way more um, resources and like all your great tips from the chat, we'll make sure we collate all that and we'll send it out to you guys so you can dig a bit deeper. Um, we are going to talk about composting. Is there any sort of, everyone keen to come to a composting session if we run something like that at the hub? And I know council runs some great ones of them. Okay, that's awesome. And I'll hand over to Moni to say, oh, my, I'm 
my behalf, I want to say a huge thanks to the panel and thank you to everybody for coming along. Uh, yes. Thank, thank you for the so opportunity. <laughs> thank you, Miffy, um, host extraordinaire. It's always a pleasure. You just run these things so beautifully. Um, and again, I'm so grateful for you. Um, thank you, Fiona. Um, Fiona's been my best buddy for, for feels like for forever. So <laughs> I, I always come to her with my crazy schemes and she's always a yes man, girl, whatever you want to say. <laughs> and one of the most famous uh, quotes that Fiona taught me was, and it's not a very nice one actually, but there's always more than one way to skin a cat, Mon. Let's do it. And we do <laughs> manage to get it done. <laughs> we do. Um, yeah, she's, I would be, um, I feel like I would have achieved nothing without her. Um, oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> no, no, no. You've been so phenomenal. And I'm so grateful for your time tonight. Um, yeah, pleasure. And Wombat, um, always a pleasure. <laughs> so, Again, another one of my right-hand mans. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just such a pleasure to, to work with you. And I know you, you've done this out of the kindness of your heart tonight. So I'm really grateful. I know you've got a little family there who's probably busting to um, have a bedtime story or something. So thank you. You hear them in the background, can you? <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for you to, to play a few tunes. But anyway, <laughs> um, Louise, oh my gosh. Louise is not only the waste expert and recycling expert, she's our phenomenal secretary. And again, she literally is one of my right-hand girls. I've got a lot of them, don't I? I'm so lucky. But she's, yeah, she's such a gem. Again, she's got a little bubba who's probably waiting for a bedtime story. So I'm really grateful for all your um, commitment and time, Louise. And I know your mum's on here over from England and we're so excited about that. <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> Um, yeah, and Dean and Judy for all your work in the background there, always phenomenal. And everybody for coming in and joining us. I'm so grateful. Can I give a plug to our next event as well? Uh, we talked yeah. about Cling Wrap. Um, we're going to be running an event live in the hub where Moni's sitting now on how to make wax wraps on the 4th of December. So keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah. we'll more information. And hopefully we'll also be streaming that live as well or get a recording of it so you can everybody can join in if they can't um, be here. So yeah, we'll continue with the um, option of oops, um, live streaming. So uh, yeah, and that's a really beautiful story behind that one too relating to the bushfires, which is, yeah, I think you're all going to love. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Miffy. Have a good night. See you all. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye.